Chris McDonough had his deep dive into his interview with Candace Wells at her home last night. It was very interesting. I recommend everyone watch it who's interested in this case. I like Chris. I said before I liked him. He got us some great insights and analysis in this. I know some people don't like him, um, but I think he's great. It's great to have someone with his experience and knowledge, and I've learned a lot from watching his videos. Any retired homicide detective is, is a plus in my book. He does keep a lot of things open, and my, my only thought would be, whatever your theory is, you will find what you're looking for via confirmation bias in one of Chris's videos. But I'm not even sure that's valid, or how he could even change that if he, if he can't close anything off. A lot of people do jump on the fact, though, that he says Candace has trauma from the waterhole, and is this because something happened there, that's where the accident happened, but that's... In my opinion, Candace's last real memory of summer. Like, wouldn't that be a bit triggering in itself? If nothing happened there, the fact that you're looking at the water hole and you're like, that's my last good memory of my child before she went missing? I don't know. It might be just me, but... I also get ASMR vibes off, Chris. I don't know, is that just me or anyone else? I like the way he makes people feel comfortable, especially when he sits down with them. And I like the way he says, okay, okay. I have gone to sleep listening to Chris doing interviews because I just find it so relaxing. But anyway, back to Candace. He broke down his interview with Candace in the home. I think two weeks ago he did one at the waterhole. And he started off by looking at some of the early pictures just to give you an idea of the home and the scene as close as we can to the time that someone went missing. Shows a picture of, of Grandis bending down actually so he's kind of questioning how sore was her knee. If we have a picture here shortly after someone went missing and she's bending down with both knees. And he showed a picture of the laundry in the house, which I thought was interesting because that's one of the things Candace said that she was doing. When she started to get pushed a bit on the timeline, she said that she was just doing, doing laundry. And he shows a picture of the f when you first come into the house, the boys kind of area, and how different that is to downstairs, I think is what he's trying to emphasise. Shows a picture of the flower pots and the Paw Patrol and talks about how they were moved when he got there. I don't remember, he's there three to four weeks after someone went missing, so they were moved very fast, and not looked after at all, which if that was one of the very last things that Summer did, you'd think you would look after it. He then talks about a bottle of Fanta, which I'm not so sure, is there anything in that? It's kind of a bit like Keenan and Kel and Who Legs Orange Soda, probably a few of them, probably a few of them, but there was a bottle of Fanta in the car with Summer, and then that was in the house as well, so I think he's just curious to know who likes the Fanta, whether it's one person or, or a few of them. He counted 13 dogs when he got there. All of them were barking. All of them came down the hill. And kind of insinuating here that they would do this if someone came up to the house. If someone came up to the basement. But I have seen other videos where the dogs are pretty placid. But it was interesting. The first thing that Candace did when she got out of the car was going into the house. He said she stalled for 15 minutes before they got up there in the store down the road. So he's questioning did she call Don to tell him to leave before Chris got up there. The television was on downstairs in the bedroom we know that. The workers that were cutting down the trees for the power lines were still there at the time and Candace tries to suggest maybe one of them had something got to do with it. Chris doesn't think there is much in that, said it's a very tough scenario to imagine, doesn't make sense as there will be a, t a few of them down there so they'd all have to be in on it. And then he just watches Candace kind of move around, talks about habits, baselines, as she's kind of pottering about opening the doors where she goes first, does she close the door after, or stuff like that. And then he tries to take her through step by step. We've all seen the interview step by step of what happened exactly when you got home. She said Summer was still asleep. Said she was wrecked because they had to get up early to take Rama to the hospital. Maybe half seven. So she woke her up and took off the seatbelt. And this is where the lies start. I think that part might be true. That she woke Summer up when she got home, took off her belt, Summer potted up. But from here on in, I'm not sure I believe anything. He makes a good point about Summer chasing the boys down the dog trails. And he thinks that's why the hounds actually track Summer down that trail. But because they tracked her down that trail doesn't necessarily mean that the scent that they're tracking is from her being taken from the house. He starts pointing out when Candace takes her hat off. This is the first time she does it. And she does it a lot through this video. He says it's a stress response when she doesn't know or is uncomfortable with a question or making something up. It's interesting that Ali also said, which I think she was telling the truth because she kind of just threw that comment out there when she was talking about... Candace ringing her that night on video call when someone went missing. Chris was asking her what she was doing. She was like, nothing really. She was just saying that Summer's gone and she kept taking her hat off and playing with her hair. They walk over to the front door and this is where Candace makes the comment. They were all locked in. Nobody can get in. Nobody can get out. 
which she'll kind of pull back on later because that doesn't really work for the narrative that she's trying to fit because if they were all locked in it, it doesn't look possible that that summer could actually open that basement door chris asks where the boys were and she takes her hat off again she starts pausing when he asks about summer and this is because she's she's in the line now already she's in her narrative this is part of something she has completely made up so she's struggling starts moving the hat again ma thinking she's completely making her up doesn't know what to say deception everywhere she says they would just do normal stuff and brought the shopping in so she got out of the car went over took off summer seatbelt woke her up went into the house got the boys was doing normal stuff came back out brought the shopping in chris has no time for this he thinks she's completely making her up candace can't look him in the eyes turning away when 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 he asks her questions taking her hat off again saying it was just normal it was just normal stuff but she doesn't have an iota and next is a very very good point so when candace says that summer is on the floor playing with toys so she points in and says oh someone went in she was playing with her toys on the floor this is before she went downstairs and chris correctly points out that if she's playing with her toys then why would she need to go downstairs to play with her toys was it new toys was it different toys why wouldn't she bring them back upstairs and play where there's a bit of light they walk over to the flower pots candace talks about the toys and the rocks i don't believe a word of it not a word i don't think chris does either he makes a good point also that the detectives didn't collect any of these toys if this was the last thing that summer touched you'd think they would want to collect them is it because they don't believe a word of it either i don't know then we get the part where she goes back over to the house after getting some candy from grandma candace actually forgets her script of she washed her hands before she ate the candy here but i'd say her brain is spinning because she's in the part of the story that she made up and she's still kind of locking down that lie and chris knows it she then points and walks him over to the spot and really emphasizes we've seen this before where she walked to the spot and she watched summer go into the house and she told one of the boys to watch her the oldest but keep keep that in mind so she's trying to say that she's in total control of the situation she has eyes on summer she knows exactly where she is she went out of her way to walk to where she could see the boys in the house and see her going then she does her thing walks off to grandma's trailer to fix her knee brace which couldn't have taken that long if if true at all came back over to the boys asked where summer is they, sh- they said she was downstairs like even that itself that whole timeline of that couldn't be more than 30 minutes so candace has a real real problem here where is the missing two hours what happened they go into the house and they start having a chat and chris correctly points out that one of the photographs that he showed us at the start of the video where summer's clothes were are now removed and don's don and candace are hanging up there instead so it's very quick for summer's cl- clothes to be removed do they know she's not coming back then we get to the stairs the stairs and no matter how many times you've seen this it is shocking it's child neglect it is having a five-year-old down there it just it turns my stomach when i see it when i see the stairs when i see the basement and you can tell in the video and from his reaction chris is pretty stunned by it as well it's just a horrible environment for a kid to be in he talks about how this in the parent's mind is the last contact site of the child and how he thinks it's bullshit and all bets are off here enough for him and he says that he's he's a bit shook by the stairs he's shook by the basement and he knows something's up there is one thing here that chris kind of skips over i was hoping he'd hone in on it but i'll come back to her at the end of the video candace says she went downstairs she looked under summer's bed and looked under blankets just keep that in mind chris points out how dark it is and how you couldn't even play with your toys down there and how summer is an outdoor kid which i think we all agree with then we get to the back door and now all of a sudden after candace saying upstairs that all doors are locked nobody in nobody out she corrects herself and she's like i don't remember whether i locked this door or not the reason for that is for someone to come up there and take somewhere directly from the basement that would have to be open summer's not going to be able to open that door if it's locked and this is a major major point because candace now is trying to suggest that summer wandered out perhaps wandered out of the basement or at very least leave that option open but if that door was open that's a direct contrast to what candace was saying about watching summer when she was upstairs she walked over she watched her going into the house she watched told one of the boys look after her so she's in total control of the situation and she knows exactly where summer is but if that door is left open summer can break that at any stage she can go out there and nobody will know where she is so these two scenarios don't make sense one of them is a lie and i think it's the first one 
I think we all know it's the first one when Candace walks over and says that she watched Summer going in and told one of the boys look after her. That's not true at all. She didn't know where Summer was, in my opinion. She just took eyes over. And once he sees the door and sees the basement, this is where Chris is pointing out that there's no way a stranger took, took Summer from the basement. And he's not even sure she went to the basement in the first place. I'm not so sure either. He mentions next one comment that I talked about in my first video. And I was hoping he'd click or, or go back to Candace searching under the bed or, or searching under the, the clothes, as she said. But he talks about one of the TBI officers saying that one of the boys said that they were playing hide and seek. And just kind of moves off it quickly, says it bothers him a bit. But I have a little theory on that and I was, I was talking about it in the first video about how if Summer came home, went into the boys, told them that she was with Hunter, seen Hunter, had a great time. All kids love teenagers. They would have been a bit jealous. They would have been a bit jealous. She might have telling them about getting a slushy. They didn't get a slushy. They might have been a bit jealous about that. And they were watching Minecraft on YouTube. So the idea that when Candace got home, the boys were mad to go outside. I don't buy that at all. If they were locked on to Minecraft videos on YouTube, it'll be very difficult for them to get away from that. They'd have to be kicked off it to get away from it. Anybody who has kids, and I think... Chris would spot that as well if he had a child grown up today that was watching Minecraft videos. He'd see how difficult it was to, to break that connection, to get him away from YouTube if they're on it for hours. So I was speculating, did Summer come home, go into the boys, start talking about Hunter, start talking about her slushy, and was annoying him a little bit. So to get rid of her, to, so they can watch their videos in peace, they were like, Summer, do you want to play a game of hide and go seek? And start to count into 10. 1, 2, 3... The minute Summer got out of earshot, they stopped counting, went back to their video. Bit mean. It is mean, obviously. We've all done it though, I think. Have you ever wanted a, wanted a child or a kid to get you something from the house or another room and you're like, I bet you can't get it for me in 10 seconds and you start counting. But you don't care about the 10 seconds, you're just trying to get them to do it. That type of situation. And remember what I was saying about Candace going downstairs to the basement, searching under the bed, searching under the clothes. Did one of the boys tell her this? Is that why she was searching under the bed? Did she think someone was playing hide and seek? Because there might be a sprinkle of truth in there. And if Summer was playing hide and go seek with the boys, did did she have an accident? Did she? We, we, we've talked about her hiding in one of the old fridge freezers outside. Did she wander off down to the creek and was taken from there? But this comment about hide and seek and the boys being on Minecraft on YouTube just, just has me thinking a lot. I think there could be something in that. I hope he comes back to it. I hope he hones in on that a small bit. But the video was very good. Check it out. I'll, li I'll link it down below. Before I go, a big, big thank you to my two new gorgeous Patreons. S. Ho and Amazie. Thank you so much. Episode 1 of the podcast is now up there. It was put up there this morning. It's really, really easy to listen to. You can listen through the Patreon app. Or you also get a private kind of RSS feed. I tested it out this morning. It worked perfectly. Whereby it will link into whatever app that you use to listen to your podcast. So you get this private RSS feed and you'll be able to listen to it through that. It's very easy. So that podcast is up there now where I'm sitting down with a friend talking about Summer Wells. Talking about Ashley Murphy. It's an Irish case that's kind of ongoing at the moment. Pretty nasty stuff there. She was attacked while out jogging. And then we're also talking about two lads who brought a dead body into the post office during the week in Carlo and tried to claim his old age pension. Didn't work out for him. But that's up there now on Patreon. If anyone wants to check it out, I'll put a link in the description. Good luck. God bless. Have a good day.